I'm Ebony Allard and I'm a misfit turned maven. I'm a coach, I'm an author, a podcaster, an artist, an advocate. Um, and as you can probably tell, someone who doesn't particularly like labels. So I have hundreds of them. Um, I'm based in the UK. I always say I'm a global citizen. I'm from nowhere. I travel a lot. I don't identify with any one particular place or country. And I really resonate with the idea of being a global citizen and being a citizen of the world. So a misfit. I now say a misfit is someone who is too creative, is too innovative, is too geeky, is just too full of heart to clock in and clock out of a job or life. And what a maven is, is an expert by experience who kind of owns their stuff and who feels at home in themselves. It's an old Hebrew word. It means expert by experience. And it's, yeah, it's kind of where I've ended up after really doing the work to to learn to like myself and there's a whole long story about how I ended up you know how I was kind of I really didn't like myself for a very very long time I felt very misunderstood I felt like I didn't fit in I felt like I didn't belong um and that I needed to be somebody else in order to be seen in order to be loved in order to belong and fit in in any way and so I wrestled for a really long time with with these two things, like my two most important values for me are the idea of freedom and belonging. And what was the hardest thing or the thing that caused discord within me was the, uh, was the, the belief underpinning it all that I couldn't have both of those things at the same time. I could either belong or I could be free, but I couldn't be me and belong anywhere. And so I ended up in a place where uh, I went through being five figures in debt, losing my home, living out my car, starting a business, like really ended up at rock bottom and needed to ask for help and discovered humility and discovered allowing other people to uh, do things for me and did a tiny bit of work around receiving and not being independent. Um, And then repeated all the same mistakes again and ended up in a place where I felt really, really suicidal. Um, And a series of events meant that I ended up in Bali. And within six weeks of being in Bali, I'd recreated my whole life. I had six entrepreneurs that I was working for, making them lots of money, learning how to adapt my chameleon-like self to this new world and fit in and belong and all of those things. And I realized I was miserable. I realized I was in paradise and I was miserable. And the next like layer of thinking was, hmm, wherever I go in the world, I'm still going to be there. And it's me that's causing this thing. And if I really want my life to be different, then I have to be different. And for the first time in my life, it wasn't like, oh God, I have to be different to fit in. It was like, okay, I'm making a decision to figure out who I really am and learn to like it or change until I do. And for me, that was the discerning moment, the defining moment in my whole story is that decision and commitment to figure out who the fuck I really am and learn to like it. And that's, that was December 2011 or January 2012. And so since then, I've been on this journey really of learning to love who I really am, taking ownership of that, going into all the shadows, Uh, finding the vulnerabilities and then in my work with other women and men and misfits you know people who have no identity or who are on some kind of spectrum or feel like they don't fit in and belong and can't be free and belong at the same time I help them using the tools that I've learned along the way to integrate and to figure out and and become themselves come home to themselves and be okay with who they are Uh, the belief that I have to do it all on my own without asking for help from anyone and that I have to be perfect. And when I let go of those beliefs, when I started to trust other people, to let other people in, to allow it to be easy or for allow myself to receive or just change the rules about what was acceptable, that's when everything shifted for me. Like I was living, I had no idea, but I was living in this tiny little box that I had created for myself about what was right and what was wrong, how one should be in the world in order to receive you know, love and acceptance. But, and, and in order to be, and I had, I, I often say to people, I had to take my camouflage off in order for my people to find me. And I believe that that's so true of all of us. 
alone. So we all have this, like, it, and actually it's perpetuating through everything. I must be strong. I must be tough. I must be hard. I must do it alone. With women, I think the issue is we must be strong and tough and hard and da la la. But we also must be soft and vulnerable <laughs> and open yeah. and hard. It's like, okay, this is too much, right? The, um, the thing that I still have running, unless I catch it, which is this idea that I must be or that I even can be all things to all people at all times. And I don't know where it comes from and it almost doesn't matter where it comes from because we all have strengths and weaknesses or challenges or things that we're better at, propensities or, or things that we love to do that when we work together, they are compatible with other people's stuff. And then we can co-create. And I had no idea about interdependence. I had no idea about co-creation. I'd never seen this magic because I was so busy trying to just be independent because I, I had decided that independence was freedom and they're not the same thing. And so many of us are operating from this weird idea that there is a right way and a wrong way to do anything. And, and then we berate ourselves for being wrong or not being good enough, or we make ourselves wrong for the relationship not working. And actually it's, it's just a compatibility issue, right? And so many of us, and this is particularly as women, but I've seen it in, in men as well, bend and shape ourselves to make ourselves fit into a certain relationship or into a certain way of being. And my... At this point on my journey, my understanding is it's kind of silly, right? Like why struggle to make something fit when I can just go, when we can both say, hey, this is a struggle. Like, is it a struggle for you? It's a struggle for me. Let it go and then just go and move on to the next person or to the next situation. Yeah, and I, and I feel like there's a caveat to that, right? Because there are some people who would just go, well, this is, this is hard, I'm going to walk away. This is hard, it's, I'm going to walk away. Like, okay. And you missed the bit where I said, like, communicate. Like, it just, like, sometimes it's really hard to tell the truth. Sometimes it's really hard to find the words, to articulate what it is that you're feeling or why something is difficult. And it's also my experience that if you're willing to have that conversation, uh, something alchemizes and that relationship can completely shift. So it might not be the person or the compatibility or the relationship that isn't working for you. It might just be that you aren't working for you, that you aren't being true. You aren't being uh, operating from a place of integrity, that there's something that you wish you could say, but you're scared. And so I would do all of those things first. And then like, if that's not landing or the other person isn't meeting you halfway or something hasn't shifted or changed, like then you have feet and you're allowed to use them. Please go find some. Things. And so the very thing that we think is hard becomes easy when you look at it from another perspective and for me that's the fascinating thing about life like i think the more often we can look at things from a different perspective the more choices we then have the more empowered we become and the easier it will be and so when people ask me like what are some of the tools that you recommend for life generally or becoming happier or all of those things i will always recommend meditation and people are like oh does that mean like sitting on the cushion and not thinking? No, there are hundreds of different types of meditation. And one of them is learning to shift perspective. So we do it in like a meta meditation where you're, you know, looking at something as if um, you are sending it love and then you're sending love to the whole world or whatever. And, and that's an example of uh, shifting your perspective from like one to many and like, oh, I can do that. And then in meditation, you can sit and, um, be with yourself but you could then be the witness so you could step outside of yourself and go oh how would how does somebody else in the world see me what would it be like to be there well then you could be you know, god or the universal creator or the sun or whatever it is you want to call it and go well, how if i was stepped into that place how would i see me in the world and as soon as we start being able to do that as soon as we have the ability to shift our perspective and our awareness then we've got so much more choice, this space between us and the stuff that's rushing at us to make decisions about every day. As a society, there is one very specific, narrow demographic that has the loudest voice most often. And I would love for, I'd love to use my platform and my privilege as a white woman, as a cis, you know, heterosexual woman to uh, shine voices or shine the light on different voices and different realities and different ways of living and really demonstrate again this is the showing not telling there is no right way and no wrong way to live 
and take what works and leave the rest. And maybe these are some ideas that you could help you think differently and then behave differently in, in your work.